In this screencast, we will analyze how the selection of a controller type in the PID family affects the steady state value of the process for a change that occurs to a disturbance variable. So to motivate this, we're going to take a look at a system where we have a first order process and we're trying to control by a PID family controller. Based on the dynamics of this process, it is slow enough to assume that the dynamics of the sensor transmitter and the valve are both negligible. What's happening in this situation is that we are seeing a change in a disturbance variable, that is the disturbance variable L, which is not being controlled by the process. In practicality, this can happen all the time for a whole host of reasons where you have a variable that can affect your controlled variable, but is incapable of being controlled, again, for a variety of reasons. So if the transfer function that relates the controlled variable y to the disturbance variable l is also first order, like the process relationship, what we're going to do here is take a look at the offset that occurs when we're using a p-only controller and a pi controller. We're given the fact that the process is a first order transfer function, so we'll just write this here as kp over tau ps plus 1. Similarly, we said the relationship between the controlled variable, which in this case is y, to the disturbance variable stated as l is also first order. So that will be kl over tau l s plus 1. We're also looking at the fact that the valve and the transmitter, due to the fact that their dynamics are much slower than the process, can be assumed negligible. That means that these are both just gains, kv and km, respectively. For our controller, we have two parts to this question. One is the fact that it's a P-only controller whose transfer function is KC. And part B is the PI controller, which can be written as KC tau IS plus 1 over tau IS. The question is asking to determine what the offset is at the steady state value and to assess how it handles the disturbance. So therefore, this will be the difference between the desired value of Y minus the actual value of Y. So in this case, if there is a disturbance in our process, what we would want to happen at the end is that the value of our controlled variable does not change. Because here we're assuming the fact that the set point has not changed. So therefore, if we have a set point of, say, 50 degrees Celsius, we're going to want that to always be 50 degrees Celsius, regardless of what disturbances affect our process. So in our case here, since we're dealing in deviation variables, the value of our desired variable, the controlled variable, should be zero. So what we now have to do is calculate the actual value. So in order to do that, we're going to have to find the value of y in transfer function form to see how it handles a change in L. So to do that, we're going to have to use some block diagram algebra. So in this case, since the set point value is unchanged, that can be assumed to be zero. So what this leaves us with, from a block diagram standpoint, is if we go around the block here, this plus branch is zero. So what we're left with is, if we follow the branch here, is we have negative y, gm, gc, gv, gp, plus... If we follow the L path, we have L times GL. When I put those two sums together, that's just going to equal Y. So if we do a little bit of algebra here, we can see the fact that Y plus Y, GM, GC, GV, GP equals LGL. We can rearrange this to get Y over L equals GL over 1 plus GM, GC, GV, GP. In this case here, we're saying that L is a step function of magnitude m, so therefore its transfer function is m over s. So we can substitute in other transfer functions. We can get that y will equal m over s multiplied by gl, which we said was a first order transfer function, divided by 1 plus, we're assuming that the transmitter is zeroth order, the controller we'll deal with when we evaluate their separate parts, the valve is zeroth order, and the process is first order. We will now evaluate this for the various types of controllers. So for part A, we will look at a P-only controller. And to evaluate the offset, we need to find what the actual steady state value is. There are a number of ways to do this, but for the sake of this problem, we'll take advantage of the final value theorem. And the final value theorem states that the limit 
as t goes to infinity of a function equals the limit as s goes to zero of the function in the Laplace domain of s times f. So what we'll do is we'll evaluate our function in the s domain since that's where we are right now. So this will be the limit of s times m over s times kl over tau l s plus one divided by one plus km kc kv times kp over tau ps plus one. So here we can cancel out the values of s and the tau l and tau ps terms are going to go to zero. So this leaves us with the value here at steady state will be kl over one plus km kc kv kp. The final value is not zero, so therefore a disturbance passing through will have an irrevocable change on how our control variable will act. So the offset will be zero, the desired value minus the value we just calculated. So in other words, that value we calculated is the negative value of the offset. We do have some ability to dictate what we want kc to be. So if we look at this equation, as kc gets higher, the offset gets lower. So therefore, the higher the kc value, the lower the difference will be between what our set point was and what it actually is. However, another point to be aware of is, is as kc goes up, the potential for stability issues also goes up. So therefore, there's only so much you can do here. If you're trying to control a process and it is extremely important for your process to be exactly at that set point, P-only control does have a flaw in it and it can only do so much to reduce that value. So for part B, we'll do a similar analysis for a PI controller and the PI controller has a transfer function of KC times tau IS plus 1 over tau IS. So again, we're going to use the final value theorem. And that will just be s times m of s times the load transfer function divided by 1 plus km. Now we'll put in the transfer function value multiplied by the gain of the valve multiplied by the process transfer function. We'll now do a little bit of algebra first before evaluating the limit. So what we'll now do is begin to evaluate the process. We'll see the fact the s's cancel. Because of the tau i s term, the entire numerator will go to zero, and the first term of the denominator will go to zero. Additionally, the tau i s term will go to zero here, but the km, kc, kv, kp is still a value, so therefore our limit is zero over a value which is non-zero. So we don't have a zero over zero limit issue, so what that means is this process at steady state will go to zero which is exactly what we desire. So therefore, our offset here equals 0 minus 0, which is 0. So PI control gives us the advantage of giving us no offset. The additional problems, though, that we face with PI control is the fact that with two different variables to control for our controller, KC and tau i, issues of stability can be more problematic. And additionally, tau i, because of its presence of s in the denominator of the transfer function, can slow your process down. However, if offset must be 0, I control is unavoidable. So in this screencast, we took a look at how P and PI control have different steady state effects on a process when there is a disturbance to it.